Times NWA World's Heavyweight Champion Scrap Iron Adam Pierce, and you're watching WGS TV. Welcome to another installment of WGS TV right here on YouTube.com slash Russell Gamer and ZFX TV. I'm the Russell Gamer, don't believe only Boudreau. Um I do apologize for the Monday Night Raw review being late this time. As you guys can probably tell from the background right here if you're looking at us at this part of the video, um, I'm not actually at my house. I'm actually over here in New Orleans uh, getting ready for MechaCon uh, coming up tomorrow. And I will have some live vlog coverage of that coming up tomorrow and throughout the weekend right here on WGS TV. So we just was a little late because I was busy getting prepared for it, but we're ready here for the Monday Night Raw review. Got a uh, got a couple of the guys and a special guest to talk about Monday Night Raw. Uh, first off, ladies and gentlemen, he's the man from South Park, simply known as Cartman. Cartman, what's up? Oh, fuck it, fuck. Yeah, nice intro, <laughs> nice intro there, Cartman. Thanks, and ladies and gentlemen, he is the Bay Area MVP, known as Will. Will, what's up? Vince Russo's gone. La 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 la. And ladies and gentlemen, our special guest on this week's Monday Night Raw review from YouTube.com slash the Double Z TV. Ladies and gentlemen, the one, the only Double Z. Double Z, sup? What's up, YouTube world? Well, guys and gals, we do have a lot to talk about to get to here on this week's uh, edition of the Monday Night Raw review. Of course, starting off at the very beginning with John Cena to come out to talk about Brock Lesnar and how the fans are now suddenly in love with Brock Lesnar. You know, he, he was despised at WrestleMania for uh, defeating the Undertaker streak, and lo and behold, oh, now he's going against John Cena. He's the most beloved guy in the WWE because all the fans hate. John Cena, and they all want to see a part-timer like Brock Lesnar, who probably won't even show his face in WWE again until SummerSlam, Double Z. I mean, I just don't understand these fans today. It's always a baffling thing. People always have that mentality, no matter what. It's always this whole anybody but Cena attitude, no matter what. One moment they'll think something, then if it's against John Cena, they'll throw their morals right out the window just because they don't like John Cena. It's just baffling the way these these fans are finicky. But uh, you know something interesting did come out of that. Paul Heyman appears, of course, to add to the promo of you know hashtag Cena versus Brock, and then Cesaro, who supposedly dumped uh, Paul Heyman the week before, comes out, starts defending his friend, and challenges John Cena to a matchup. And I, I gotta say, uh, well, this matchup right here, Cena versus Cesaro, damn good. Uh, yeah, opposed to what other people think, this is probably one of the best matches Cesaro has had. But the crowd, ignore the crowd. Match was pretty good. Some spots, especially that European uppercut. Man, he's just good with the uppercut. But I give the match a 3.5. It was really good. Cesaro definitely a master when it comes to applying the that European uppercut in the, in the right spots. He's definitely learned how to do that. Um, up next, the segment, you know, I would throw it, toss it to James, but James isn't here because he's our resident Divas correspondent. Um, it's Paige coming out supposedly to apologize to AJ, then Paige kind of slips the C word and not the four letter C word a lot of people would be thinking about, the other C word, which is crazy, then AJ uh, attacks her. This is basically just, Cartman, in my opinion, just to add fuel to the, the rivalry that is Paige versus AJ, and, and this is just something that fans have been wanting to see for a long time, is a feud between Paige and AJ. Exactly. Um, yeah, because Paige was... I'll give it this. Though both of those two are the only, like, two, one of the, a couple of the only like, divas in the WWE that actually have any sort of talent in the ring whatsoever. And it'll actually be good to see a feud between two people who actually have the slightest clue what they're doing. Up next, the authority wanted to call out Brie Bella to kind of reconcile over the charges that happened last week, and Cartman still stands by probably one of the best segment of all time of Monday Night Raw, yes. watching He's like, Stephanie McMahon uh, getting carted off in Except hand. for Chris Jericho this week, but yeah. Well, uh, 
you know, Triple H kind of got on the fans, you know, saying, oh, how dare you laugh at my wife and then calls out Brie Bell and they get Y2J, Chris Jericho, demanding a match with Bray Wyatt. He, he also kind of slipped in his famous Stephanie McMahon line. I'm not going to repeat it word for word because I don't know it word for word. And then he forgot the part how he comes out and sings uh, the theme song from Cops with the WWE Universe. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Yep. But I'm setting up a match with him and Seth Rollins for later in the evening, so I'm very interested to see where they were going to take that. But up, up next, a six-man tag, The Miz and Rybaxel taking on the show off Dolph Ziggler and the Usos. Uh, Double Z, ever since, you know, what, what has been your opinion on this new movie star type gimmick that The Miz has debuted since his return? I think it's a good thing it finally gives him something outside of that whole egotistical I'm the Miz and I'm awesome gimmick. Let's just see if he can really play it off well, because we know The Rock had it back in 2003, and he seemed to make it work to a certain degree, but let's see if it can really work for The Miz that well first. Miz always, uh, in this gimmick, always you know wanting to protect his moneymaker, the face, and that's really cost him a few matches. Um, the uh, finish of the match is Dolph Ziggler, hitting the zigzag on Ryback to pick up the victory, so we got that, and up next, ladies and gentlemen, can you just believe? Well, apparently, it was not enough for Bo Dallas, as you know, we were always wondering, you know, who, you know, who would be the one to snap the Undertaker streak? Well, well he had that answered earlier in the year with, with uh, Brock Lesnar. So we always wanted to know who would be the one to snap the streak of Bo Dallas, and well, are you surprised at all that it was our truth the one who to be the one who snaps the streak of Bo Dallas? Honestly, no, because it could have been anybody that could have done it. It could have been anybody, even Cartman or Double Z could beat Bo Dallas. <laughs> but. I would like to quote something that James said. My client R Truth has broken the believe streak. Have a sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> what? From our our friend James, the Davis correspondent here on WGS TV. Um, following that was uh, a segment just a few to uh, you know add more rivalry and heat on Rusev and Lana, and to build up more of Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger as faces. That's pretty much how this one, this segment kind of panned it out. You know, they really don't need to go into too many details as to what really transpired. It was just, you know, Rusev and Lana bashing the American flag, and then Zeb Coulter and Jack Swagger responded. Swagger came out and attacked Rusev, and lo and behold, Swagger and Coulter are now more over as face than they've ever been as heels. Um... Following that, the Damien Sand double Z. This is what I call the Damien Sandow identity crisis. I mean, look what he's been in the past. He's been a um, he's been, he's been a dancer. He's, he's been he's a Sonic employee. He's been LeBron James. Um, he's been a dude at the beach. Um, and now this week, since he's in Houston, and what's the most famous saying? Houston, we have a problem. So now Demi Sandow gets to wrestle as an astronaut. And I, I will say this, Double Z, in the 20 some odd years I've been watching wrestling, I have never seen anybody ever wrestle in astronaut gear. <laughs> But he took took on Adam Rose of all people, and within I want to say about five seconds, he hits the party foul, and the match is over. Probably. Carmen, what does that say about Damian Sandow's career right now? Gone. Not existent. An understatement. <laughs> yeah, it's been that way for ah uh, how long now? Since he cashed in Money in the Bank on John Cena. Yeah, and then it began the Damien Sandow identity crisis, and it's nowhere near over. <laughs> Double Z, what's been your opinion about what they've been doing about Damien Sandow? I hope it's building up to be something big. I mean, I think the company might have seen something in Sandow after that cash-in, like how great that match was with Cena, so hopefully they're thinking we can build up like this guy who built up all this intense fury after being embarrassed so much with all these outfits. Because let's just hope it's turning something to that instead of them just doing this for no reason and then throwing it away. Because otherwise, 
they're just really ruining his career. One yeah, of the he, things, I was going to say, it looks like he's turning into the next uh, Santino. Just the <laughs> comedy oh, gimmick. The completely retarded. I think, I think a better... No I think a better... The better way to describe it, the next Charlie Haas. Oh, uh, that was the yeah. first thing that came to mind when he was doing all those impressions back in the day. Yeah, definitely. But uh, up next, well, one of the things that I've kind of picked up in wrestling as we welcome our resident music mogul over on YouTube.com slash Lance Moss TV, the incomparable Lance Moss. Lance, how you doing? How you doing, Lance? All right. Well, I uh, guess one of the things we uh, think to talk about is uh, one of the things I've kind of picked up on since I've uh, started wrestling and been in the, in the business myself is you kind of get a hint at what's going to happen. Yeah. You know, especially when you look at the backstage segment involving Randy Orton and Triple H. Randy Orton coming out to demand, uh, going back there to demand a match. With Roman Reigns, he said, no, you're not getting any more title shots until Roman Reigns is out of the picture, and Roman Reigns is taking on Kane. That kind of gave me, you know, kind of gave me the inkling that something was going to happen where this matchup never was going to happen, and that's exactly what happened. It's basically just Randy Orton beating down Roman Reigns. I mean, what was your take on it? Yeah, I mean, this kind of, I have been, he's fishing a split from the authority. Really? Yeah. yeah. Hmm. The, the, well, now we know they're probably going to do a match at SummerSlam. You know, it was a safe bet on that. But after what we saw on Monday Night Raw, they got to have a gimmick match, Lance. They can't do a traditional one-on-one. -on -one. No way. There's no way. I'm thinking maybe no holds barred, maybe. That would be good. That would be really good between those two. That they could steal the show with that one. To be, to be um, honest, and uh, up next, something I still don't understand: Fandango taking on Diego, but not only El Torito, but now apparently Summeray and Layla, Layla are now Matadors. And. All I can say is Diego rolls up Fandango with a sunset flip pin to get the victory, and then Fandango's on the ring apron, he's pissed off, and then El Torito comes out of nowhere and gores him right in the dick. That's... Let's leave it at that, because that's where the gimmick is. Um, Double Z, is there any translation for what the hell Stardust and Goldust are doing right now? God knows. I mean, it's just one bizarre thing after another. I personally like. I'm actually more of a fan of Stardust. Well, normally Goldust, uh, normally Cody Rhodes instead of Goldust, because I got ill feelings for Goldust for certain reasons. Let's just hope this is all leading to something. Yeah, just what exactly is this comic key, comic key that they're talking about? Maybe we'll get the answer to that real soon. You know, and up next we had well, kind of a unique. Divas tag match. The insane Alicia Fox teaming up with Cameron to take on Natalia and Naomi. Unique in a way is the way to finish this match. It was uh, Naomi locking on some sort of a submission hold that I'm, well that I'm not really familiar on. It was almost like a leg scissors choke almost. What you say? Osceola County, Florida, still it's called it's called this uh, it's called the um it's called the scissors the scissor lock. And okay, uh, uh, has this been something she has she used this before the submission hold? As of we're having some uh, technical errors on Will's, and we do apologize for that. But um, anyway, let's go on further to uh, Chris Jericho taking on Seth Rollins. Um, now, with uh, in, in this matchup, Cartman, you know, with the, f you know, one with the announced match that is going to be Jericho and Wyatt at SummerSlam. We get that, and two with the feud continuing and knowing the way the Wyatt family gimmick works right now, it was. Would you say that 
the appearance by the Wyatt family was somewhat predictable. Very predictable. It's just like, just based on the way the Wyatt family gimmick is, and the fact that, yeah, it's just, it was just way too obvious that it wasn't gonna, that the Wyatt family was gonna get uh, involved at some point or another throughout the match. Um. I just received the message from Will. He is having uh, technical issues, so again, we do apologize uh, for that. But in, in essence, this was still a really well worked match with a just a slightly predictable ending. Uh, you know, with the Wyatt family assaulting uh, Chris Jericho and the finale of Monday Night Raw. I predicted this back at Payback. I knew it was something like this was going to happen. Why not? Ha why not just have Lance? Why not just have Jericho versus Rollins as the main event to cap off the show? Why in the blue hell did what they think? Because that, WWE. Well, well, Stephanie McMahon and the Brie Bella confrontation would be a, a good way to sell off the show. I don't know for a com especially for a company that's not extremely happy or big on di women's wrestling, or have they happened in the past? You got me. I don't know. <laughs> Double Z, any thoughts on what they uh, end, them ending the show with this confrontation between uh, Stephanie McMahon and Brie Bella? It's kind of it's a little confusing that they would do that for the end of the show, but I did like the whole purpose behind it, especially with the confrontation. But I think that's one of the rare times where a diva's whole thing has main evented a Raw in a long time. Definitely, definitely. Um, basically, what happened. Um, we get this, um, we, you know, we get Brie Bella getting her job back, and two, getting a match with Stephanie McMahon at SummerSlam. Of course, Stephanie uh, begrudgingly ag agreed to those terms, so Brie Bella would drop the charges, and then we end the show with a good old-fashioned cat fight. But then again, if Stephanie McMahon's involved in it, would we call it a cat fight, really? I'm not sure. But um, anyway... It's time to go on our overall scores and our picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw. Now, this week's Monday Night Raw was indeed quite interesting. Uh, a lot of fans would kind of disagree with the premise of uh, them ending the show with Stephanie McMahon and Brie Bella. You know, uh, Jericho and Rollins could have been well, well served to be the main event on uh, Monday Night Raw. You know, they could have had the, uh, you know, the time in between... Uh, the, the, that, the previous match, which was, if I do go back on my notes, Alicia Fox and Cameron taking on Natalia and Naomi, then they could have the, the next block be Stephanie McMahon calling out Brie Bella and, and having all that mess, and then cap off the show with Jericho and Rollins. Those names are big enough to main event on Monday Night Raw, but apparently WWE didn't see fit to do it this week. Um, Again, you know, the continuation of the Damian Sando identity crisis, what is he going to be in on SmackDown tomorrow night? Or what is he going to be in on Monday Night Raw? Who knows? It all, I guess it would all depend on the setting from uh, where they've been. Lord knows when they come to the Cajun Dome and left, yet I'll, I can only, only dread what they're going to put him in. Um, Bo Dallas uh, having his undefeated streak snapped by R-Truth. I would say probably the beginning of a feud, in my opinion. Um, over, but overall, this show was indeed uh, quite entertaining. I'm going to score it as a 3.5 out of 5. As far as best match of the night, i, I got to go to Jericho and Rollins. Um, you know, even though it was, you know, the Wyatt family's appearance was very predictable, and I've said for a long time, when wrestling becomes predictable, it becomes boring. But, uh, however, the execution was there in the match and we know how Rollins can work and pairing him up with Chris Jericho to me that's a golden opportunity right there to put on a five star quality match and, and overall content was really good it really was however the ending just predictable but it still earns best match of the night in, in my opinion um, if they really want to follow through with Roman Reigns and King there could be a different story um, I do have a confusing segment of the night. Stardust and Goldust searching for the Cosmic Key. Leave it at that. Um, worst match? Oh, poor. Well, you know what? I'm going to leave Damian Sando alone because we picked on him enough with the identity crisis. I'm going to say worst segment of the night. You know, just based on improper placage in the show, it's Stephanie McMahon and Brie Bella. I'm, I'm sorry, but... You know, to cap off the show and and finish it off with Stephanie McMahon and Brie Bella, 
I kind of disagree with that with that place issue. You know, Stephen McMahon and Brie Bella, like I said, it could have been the setup to the main event, which Jericho and Rollins could have stolen the show and and really capped off Monday Night Raw. And instead, we ended with Stephanie McMahon and Brie Bella. It's no offense to them, but they really don't have, in my opinion, the the qualities needed to cap off a Monday Night Raw. You know, but then again, that's just my opinion. I could be wrong. Speaking of opinions, we're going to start off with our special guest for this week's Monday Night Raw review, the one and only Double Z, and get his overall score and his picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week. Double Z? When it comes to overall score, this match show was kind of in the middle-ish. I do like some of the build-up they've been doing. I give it about at least around a three out of five. It was more in the middle show. Best definitely had to go to Jericho and Seth Rollins. Like you said before, these two can easily have a five-star match. Both are extreme professionals in the ring, especially Seth Rollins. Check him out in the indie scene when he was Tyler Black. That'll be enough evidence. Worst thing, eh, I'd probably have to give it more to Bo Dallas and R-Truth because it was just questionable why R-Truth, out of the blue, was the one to end Bo Dallas' streak, even though they're probably going in a bit of different direction for Bo Dallas where he snaps when he loses. But I think just because of that, because it was an out-of-the-blue thing, it was lackluster, I would just have to go for Bo Dallas and our truth match. Definitely. We'll figure it all out. Don't worry. Best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week. Well, as well as not even there. We do apologize for that. Um, well, let's go over to Cartman, and while we wait for Will to come back and get his overall score and his picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week, Cartman. Um, best match, I'd have to say Jericho and Wyatt, even though the ending was stupidly predictable. It wasn't it was so predictable; it wasn't even funny. Um, worst segment again because of placing. It has to be the uh, Stephanie McMahon uh, Brie Bella segment just because placement was utterly terrible. There was no way that should end the show at all. But yeah, um, I have to give it. A, I'd, I would I would give it a three point five, but I'm actually gonna have to give it a three just because of how terrible the placement on that last segment was. It was just it was one of the stupidest things I've ever ever seen in my life. <laughs> all right, and uh, up next, guys, it's Lance Moss with his overall score and his picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw this week. Lance? Well, I really enjoyed this Raw. I'll give it a four. Because to me, there wasn't really a bad match. The jobber matches, they kept really short how jobber matches should be. If they're going to have them, keep them really short. That's the best way to have them. I, of course, I, I'm y'all know, I've said on here many times, I enjoy the extremely weird stuff that Co that uh, Goldust and Stardust are doing, but that's just my first... I like weird stuff, because... Hey, it's weird. I don't get where it is, but I dig it. I mean, hey, whatever. I was, hey, I, I was brought in the attitude era. What? Uh, best, uh, best match: the uh, Rollins uh, Jericho match. And I'll tell you why that the the Bella, Brie Bella, and uh, Stephanie McMahon got in there because it's Stephanie McMahon. She's McMahon. They do what they want on Raw. Yeah, you do have a point there. Um, unfortunately, from from looking at the camera, that Will is still yet to return. So hopefully, we can get him back very quickly for his overall score and his picks for best and worst match or segment of Monday Night Raw. But speaking of that, guys and gals, for those of you who are watching this right now, I'm talking to you guys, the viewers and subscribers of WGS TV. Definitely want to know what you guys think of Monday Night Raw this week. Do you kind of agree with? You know, WWE's placement as who camp off uh, Monday Night Raw with Stephanie McMahon and Brie Bella, or do you kind of agree that they should have had that as the block before and, and then have Jericho and Rollins main event the Monday Night Raw? And definitely want to know what you guys have to think about Bo Dallas' streak being snapped by somebody like R-Truth. It's not to insult R-Truth. He was the first ever NWA champion in TNA. Um, I wonder how many of you guys actually remembered that. But, um... We definitely want to know what you guys have to say. Be sure you put your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like and favorite this video. Lance, what can fans expect to see when they come visit your channel over on youtube.com slash Lance Moss TV? I got album reviews, NASCAR discussion videos, redneck gourmet cooking videos, a bunch of musical equipment reviews, 
and bunch some rants and whatever was possible in my head. If you hadn't subscribed, why hadn't you? All right, and Carmen, Carmen is also on YouTube himself over on YouTube.com. So I'm killing next Kenny Carmen. Got anything coming up? Mm, as I that I can think of at the correct moment, not really. Just whatever I decide to upload, really. And ladies and gentlemen, um, again, Will is still yet to uh, return, but um, he, he's on the hood over on iVlog along with our deepest correspondent James from the Big Easy. So uh, the links to their shows will be also in the description box of this video, as well as the link to our special guest's YouTube channel, The Double Z TV. Uh, Double Z, you want to tell everyone about, a little bit about your channel? It's mainly been about like wrestling talk, like also wrestling gameplay, match reviews, pay-per-view reviews, talking about dream matches that people like, and plenty of different things. I also got a couple of new segments debuting yeah, next week. And uh, Will has finally returned. Will, are you there? Yes, sorry about the AB. Uh, make this brief. Uh, Raw 3-7, best match, Jericho Rollins. Worst match, uh, Diego versus uh, Fondango, or Fondang, get your ass off TV. <laughs> uh, and uh, what else? Worst segment. <sighs> Couldn't there be anything more labor than Sandow? His career is going down faster than quicksand. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the perfect way to put it, right there. And so, fans, be sure you check all, all check out all the links in the description box below. Also, don't forget to please like the Facebook page. That's facebook.com slash WGSTV. And don't forget to please subscribe to youtube.com slash WrestleGamer and youtube.com slash ZFXTV Network if you haven't already. So for the incomparable, Lance Moss from Lance Moss TV, the man from South Park, simply known as Cartman, the Bay Area MVP known as well, and our very special guest, Double Z from youtube.com slash the Double Z TV. I'm the WrestleGamer, Double D. Billy Boudreaux saying, I'm praying for you, Damien Sandow. <laughs>